Hi there. Hey, I'd uh, like to take a minute to talk to you about hearing loss. Uh, did you know that uh, being exposed to uh, loud noise all the time can result in permanent damage to your hearing? That's right. And did you also know that uh, uh, once your hearing has been damaged, there's practically no way that they can restore it completely? Yeah, being in my business, you've got to know things like that, you know, uh, working around noisy equipment all the time. Uh, like, uh, you know, uh, if you lost your hearing, you'd be in big trouble, pal. That's right. Like if you were going down a dark alley and some guy was following you, you couldn't hear him. Could be curtains. And that's why I wear these. Yeah, that's right, earplugs. Or, if you like, uh, ear muffs. You gotta give your ears protection, if you know what I mean. So, uh, being in the protection business myself, I understand these things. So take it from me, Lefty Magoon. Do what I do and stick it in your ear. Lefty has a good point there. High intensity sound can damage your hearing. And the only way to prevent this damage is to place some kind of barrier between the source of the noise and the sensitive elements inside your ear. The two most effective hearing protection devices are earplugs and earmuffs. When do you need hearing protection? Anytime you're around high intensity sound like gunfire, noisy engines, loud music, pneumatic equipment, and industrial machinery. Hey, I want to talk to you about all the noise down in the machine shop. It's positively deafening. All that rattling and clanking and thumping down there is driving me crazy. I can't even hear myself think. Okay, Charlie. Let's go take a look. These should solve the problem. Just stick them in your ears whenever you're in a high noise area, and you'll be protected. Oh, no, you ain't getting me to use those things. I hate them. Besides, they, they make me feel funny. Now, fix the machine to run quieter, or figure out some way for me to operate it at a distance. Well, Charlie, we'll try. Sure sounds quieter. How'd you do it? Come take a look, Charlie. Here's how it works, Charlie. You just reach in here and... Now, wait a minute. I'm not buying that approach. You've got to do something better than that. All right, what's going on? It sounds just as noisy to me as it did before. What have you been up to? Very simple, Charlie. You wouldn't buy it when we tried to muffle the sound of the source. So now we're going to isolate you from the noise. Wait a minute. What do you mean, isolate? We built you an isolation booth. Come on, I'll show you. Charlie, I think we've finally solved the problem. We've rigged things up so that everything can be controlled from right here in this room. There's no need for you to go down to the machine shop at all anymore. Terrific. I knew you guys could do it if you just tried. Now, where do I sit? Well, Charlie, that brings up a point that I've been meaning to talk to you about. You see, with all this sophisticated and expensive equipment to run things, everything's automated now. Uh, uh, wait a minute, uh, can we work something out here? I mean, uh, you know, we can make some sort of a compromise, I'm sure. I mean, hey, hey, where did you put those earplugs anyway? Doctor says I can't do anything about it. Once you lose your hearing, you can never get it back. Says it happens to a lot of people at my age. Oh, yeah. 
But, you know, losing your hearing's no fun. Mm. I uh, can't hear worth a damn myself anymore, either. I can remember when I could hear everything. I could hear the birds singing in the evening. Used to go to the movies. Now it's no fun. Oh, boy, you're sure right about that. You know, I used to like to listen to music, but, uh, well, I don't know. It just doesn't sound right anymore. Mm. It's all flat and thin. I guess I should have listened to them down at the boiler works when they told me to wear my earmuffs. You know, I might still be going to concerts if I had. <laughs> well, I guess we all get smart as we get older. <laughs> at least that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe you're right, Grandpa. Yeah. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Syndicate securities fraud operation. We have reason to believe that LePage, the heavy set man shown in the second photograph, has kidnapped Gordon and is holding him prisoner at his country home in the northern part of the state. Judging from past experience, Gordon will not survive more than a few days under LePage's questioning. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to rescue Gordon and discredit LePage. Your support team is shown in the remaining photographs. Between them, they possess all necessary skills to successfully complete the mission. If any of you are caught, however, the secretary will deny all knowledge of your actions. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Did he say Gordon or Martin? I wish these things wouldn't self-destruct. One question. One question. Well, those engines of yours are pretty loud, aren't they? And you're not wearing any hearing protection. Doesn't all that noise bother you? No, man. No, 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 man. You get used to it. Why don't people wear hearing protection devices when they're in high noise areas? One excuse is that earplugs or earmuffs make it impossible to communicate with other people, that they shut out what you're trying to say. However, that's not true. Let's look at what actually happens when you put a protective device between your ear and the outside world. All sounds are not identical. They differ in frequency or pitch, as well as in loudness. But the most damaging noise is high-frequency noise. And this is the kind that hearing protection devices cut out most effectively. Lower and medium frequency sounds, like that of the human voice, come through with less reduction. This means that when you wear a hearing protector, you can actually hear other people talking in a noisy environment more easily than you can without the protective device. You have our reservations, I assume. Uh, that's Colchester for 8 o'clock. We made them this afternoon, several hours ago. Certainly. Right this way. Thank you. Well, Mabel, what do we have tonight? Oh, I don't know, Herman. I see they have the frog's legs. I love frog's legs. What are you going to have? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe we ought to have a drink first. Oh, waiter, could we have a drink, please? 
Certainly, sir, but would you please keep it a bit quieter? What? I can't hear you. Speak up, man. I said I'd be glad to bring you a drink. But would you please keep your voice down a bit? Oh, certainly. Now, I'll have a scotch and soda, and Mabel here will have a... Uh, what would you like, dear? I think I'll have a slow gin fizz. Thank you. What was that? A slow gin fizz? Yeah. She'll have a slow gin fizz. Yes, sir. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, deciding what to order. I think I'll have the prime rib. Yep, that's it. Prime rib. Well, then I think I will have the frog's legs. If you'll give me a teeny bite of your prime rib. Would you do that? Do what? What was that again, Mabel? I said I do think I'll have the frog's legs. If you'll give me a bite of your prime rib. Uh, all right, all right. You don't have to shout. I'm not hard of hearing, you know. Hey! Watch out for the piano! Ringing in my ears. Yeah. You want to go get a beer? No, I can't. Marge's got a roast in the oven. I got to get home. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. 